evening. Welcome to Coffee with Pastor. This is August the 3rd of 2023, and what a beautiful, beautiful day God has given to us. I believe it's somewhere in the 60s right now, and it just feels refreshing. I have a nice hot cup of coffee right here ready to be enjoyed. I have my copy of the Word of God open to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, a chapter, by the way, that you should have marked in your Bible. Great confidence, great assurance, the blessed hope of being resurrected, of being renewed, glorified. It's all in there, and we'll be reading that in just a few moments. And as you turn there in your Bible, here is the bad dad joke. Why don't ants get sick? Why don't ants get sick? Because they have antibodies, antibodies. Anyway, in a couple of years, my grandson will laugh at that. But until then, uh, we're going to groan and moan and forget about that joke. And we'll move on with our day. Let me take the opportunity to encourage you. Each day, I start the day by reading the news. And, and by the way, many, many times, it is discouraging as opposed to encouraging. Lately, not a lot of positive news has been recorded, but let me just say this. If you need a word of encouragement, if you need a word to say, hey, let's keep going, let me just say this. God is still on the throne. And yes, the day is coming when all wrongs will be made right, and all of those who have been committing the crimes, the deception, all of those things, one day, they will receive their due because not one thing escapes the notice of the Almighty God. So, be encouraged today. We're going to be reading uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 in just a few moments. But as we come before the throne of the Almighty God, let's remember He is the one that is directing the course of human history. Let's pray together. Father, we come into your presence with grateful hearts. And Father, we thank you that you are still sovereign. We thank you that we can come before you as your people, knowing full well that you will meet our needs, knowing full well that you are here with us, knowing full well that we are your people. Father, we thank you. And Lord, as we come into your presence, it is our desire to report for duty. Realizing that we are your people, we are your servants, and yea, we are your slaves to be used of you as you see fit. And Father, we're going to ask that of you right now. Use us. Use us for your honor and your glory. Father, you know what the day holds. You know where we'll be. We know who we'll see. Father, use us. For eternal purposes, may we point one to the Savior. May we have the privilege of encouraging your people, putting a smile on their face, giving hope to the hopeless. And Father, bless our way. Help us to be sensitive to your leading. And Father, by your grace that we might be faithful to you. Lord, what a joy it is to be able to pick up your word and read a passage such as, it be, such as is before us today. Father, encourage us, but change us as well. Conform us into the image of Jesus Christ. And Father, as each one of us pursues your will, we ask that you would meet the needs that you would encourage the heart, that you would strengthen your people. And Father, 
Bless them. Bless them as only you can. Constantly remind us of your presence with us, of your grace and mercy. Thank you, Lord. Please bless the reading of your word. Again, thank you for the blessed passage that is before us and the many, many that have been encouraged in the past and the many, many that will be encouraged in the future with this very passage. We ask this in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, an house, not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. If so be, that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now he that hath wrought us for the selfsame, selfsame thing is God, who also hath given unto us the earnest of his spirit. Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore we labor, that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that every one may receive the things done in his body, according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are, be, are made manifest in your consciences. For we commend not ourselves again unto you, but give you occasion to glory on our behalf, that ye may have somewhat to answer them, which glory in appearance and not in heart. For whether we be beside ourselves, it is to God. Or whether we be sober, it is for your cause. For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge, that if one died for all, then we're all dead. And that he died for all. And they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them, and rose again. Wherefore, henceforth know we no man after the flesh, yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And may God add his blessing to the reading of his word.
You know, we like to emphasize the passages, the verses in this passage, that to be absent from the bodies, to be present with the Lord. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. And beloved, let me just say this. Those things are absolutely true. But let's not forget the verses that tell us that the ministry of reconciliation, the words of reconciliation, are committed to us. The fact of the last verse that we read is the message that we need to take to a lost and dying world. For he hath made him, Jesus Christ, to be sin for us, for mankind, that we, mankind, might be made the righteousness of God in him. And that righteousness only comes through a saving faith of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Beloved, that's our job. And as I say each and every morning, it is of utmost importance that we be faithful, that we be faithful to God in all that we say, do, and think. Beloved, serve him. We belong to him. Our bodies are not our own. They were bought with a price and that being the shed blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Be faithful. Never allow yourself to become someone else's excuse for turning away from the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. People, remember, God loves you, and so do we. And until tomorrow, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with each and every one of you. Amen. And God bless you.